Welcome to Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry, where the undiluted Word of God is preached. Be blessed as you listen to today's sermon by Pastor Michael Akomia. This morning, I want to speak to us on a very important subject called the faith of the overcomer. The faith of the overcomer. The faith of the overcomer. Let's break our Bibles to Numbers chapter 13, verse 26. Numbers chapter 13, verse 26. We want to read to verse 30. Amen. Okay, let me read. The Bible said that, And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran of Tukades and brought back a word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruits of the land. And they told him and said, we came unto the land whither thou sent us, and surely it overflowed with milk and honey. May the Lord bring you to a place where you have abundance of milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. The cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Verse 30. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once. Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. Hallelujah. Look at somebody sitting by the person. You are well able to overcome it. You are well able. Tell the person you are well able to overcome it. You are well able to overcome it. You are well able to overcome that challenge. You are well able to overcome that situation. You are, well, you are well able to overcome that difficulty. You are well able to overcome that burden. Now say to, my, say to yourself, I am well able to overcome it. Hallelujah. Alright, so this morning, like I said, I want to talk about the faith of the overcomer. One of the things I want to start by saying is that there, is, there will always be something we have to overcome. Yeah. There will always be something that we have to overcome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible said, Caleb said, be still for we are, we are well able to overcome it. Now, if you are not ready to overcome it means you are not also ready for promotion. Because in the kingdom, promotion comes to those who are able to overcome. Praise the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, the Bible said that for without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. In 1 Timothy, the apostle said to Timothy, he said that this charge I give you, Timothy, that you should fight the good fight of faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if without faith, it's impossible for us to please God. And Bible says that we should fight the good fight of faith. Then it means that, then it means that, please, I follow me here. Then it means that it takes a fight to please God. Now you can write it down. God loves those who are fighters in the kingdom. But that faith is impossible to please God. And it takes a fight. First Timothy 6 12 said that we should fight. Can you put that? Said that we should fight the good fight of faith. So faith is a fight. 
So it means that as we fight, we plead. Anytime God sees his children fighting, he gives them a thumbs up. And God sees that his child is busy fighting. Fighting for her marriage. Fighting for her way. Fighting for her home. Fighting for academics. It pleases the Lord. Oh, are we together this morning here? Even to come to church is a fight. Hey, praise the Lord. But you almost didn't come this morning. Some of us almost came late. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. When you're a student and you have exams to write, even to write the exam is a fight. But you see that all of a sudden you, lo- you lose the appetite to study. You lose the desire to read your books. When you pick the books, they look too plenty in your eyes for you to read. It's a fight. Oh, praise the Lord. To marry is a fight. To have an international business is a fight. Oh, are we together here? Even to eat is a fight. Yeah. Now, to sleep is a fight. Now, you see, it, because the Lord has given you sleep, so you don't know. But there are people who are struggling to sleep. Yeah. They have to go into the pharmacy to buy drugs to be able to sleep. So if you slept without any drugs last night, you must clap your hands and give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, project the first Timothy 6. Lord. Say that, fight the good fight of faith. So the only fight God permits us to fight is the fight of faith. And God calls it a good fight. You see, some fight are bad fight. For example, Ephro, taxi. Now taxi driver and us in there two cities. I want to say us in there or one city, 50 pesos. The fight over that 50 pesos is not necessary. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. We are fighting certain for that are not necessary. Yeah. Some people can fight too. Oh, okay. Then they start insulting in the taxi. Most a higher number say, Oh, has it has it happened to you before? Yeah. Oh, why a 130? Also, why a 150? So, why a 130? Also, why a 150? Then they start fighting over 20 percent. I fire you from fighting that fight. May you begin to fight the fight of faith. Oh, I'm attacking to somebody here. Now, the, you see, there's something we call, you see, most of the time we talk about. Um, false prophets, they are dangerous, but a false teacher is more dangerous. Yeah. If a teacher stands before children and teaches them that one plus one is four, and the class is 75 people, it means that he, yeah, that teacher is sentencing all the children into failure. Amen. Now, one of the greatest religious lies in the kingdom is that when you become a Christian, all things will become well. It's a lie in the kingdom. Now, the same lie is also in Islam. The Islam lie is that if you take a bomb and you kill yourself, you go to heaven. And when you go, you will get 70 virgins. <laughs> so they carry a bomb and enter a car, enter a church, bang! They want to go to heaven for 70 virgins. The question is, Everybody dying and going to heaven or going to eternity is, is probably married. And once they are married, their virginity is broken long time. Yeah. So probably, maybe the only virgins in heaven are babies. See, but these people have believed that lie. Oh, are we together here? No, and I'm saying that one of the lie in Christianity is that when you become a Christian, things will come. It's a lie. The moment you become a Christian, God recruits you as a soldier. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. One time I came out of my room and the Lord said that you must change the prayers to pray. I said, why? He said, why do you arrest? I said, it's because we pray. And he said, no, don't arrest. I didn't train you as a policeman. I trained you as a soldier. So just kill. They don't arrest. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. So we are searching. Oh, are we together this morning here? So when the Lord said, I would say that don't arrest them anymore. Kill. You see, now, one time I closed my shop. I was going to mommy's house. Then I got to the traffic light. Forgive us. I know some policemen are honorable. Amen. Hallelujah. Auntie Jane, forgive us. Praise the Lord. Then I saw this man I turned his back into a kiosk and he's counting money. I said, ah, what shop did he open? That is counting money there. I said, ah, you are to stand here and direct traffic. 
But the day is over and it's taking sales from the traffic shop that he has opened. So, you see, the police are trained to arrest. That is why when you do something bad and you go to them, they try to arrest you. Even if the person is a criminal, they want to arrest. They've caught the person still, you know, they say, we want to investigate. So, we have to investigate into the matter. Say, ah, you've caught this person stealing. But soldiers are not trained that way. Soldiers, they are trained to kill. And you are not a policeman of God. You are a soldier of Christ. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. It means that you should be killing something. Oh, you are not here this morning. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready to kill. Hey, look at it. Say, get ready to kill. Tell the person, faith is a fight. And you must get ready to kill. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. May the Lord deliver you from that religious lie. I said, may the Lord deliver you from that religious life. Christianity is a fight. Yeah, it's a fight. You want to marry, it's a fight. I tell you. And, and, and you must be ready to fight it till you get it. Somebody you have to fight over your children. The enemy can stand up as for you, no child. And ladies and gentlemen, when you see that, don't sit down and fold your hands. God says with that faith, it's impossible to please him. And he said that we should fight the good fight of faith. It means that when you sit down and fall down, you are not pleasing the Lord. Oh, are we together? Are we together? Yeah. Some people have changed the fighting into complaining. Some people have exchanged the fighting into crying. No. Are we together? Yeah. So this morning, eh, I want to encourage you that you become an overcomer. I said, I want to encourage you that you become an overcomer. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. Those of us believing the Lord to marry. Listen, after marriage, more battles. Ask those who are married. Oh, should I give the microphone to someone? I said what? After marriage, more battles. Okay. After children, more. So every time of the kingdom is a fight. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. And as we fight, God is in heaven and he's excited. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. When the Lord sees his children fighting, he's excited. One time I have an uncle. He came home and he said that um, he heard one of my cousins was fighting. I said, what did you do? So when he went to the scene, he saw that my cousin was beating the guy. So he, he just turned. <laughs> I said, wow. So he was excited. And I tell you, it's the same thing in the eyes of God. God is pleased. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. I said, God is excited when he sees that his children are fighting for their faith. May you fight for your own faith. I said, may you fight for your own faith. I said, may you fight for your own faith. Now, let me tell you something. Everything in heaven has a price tag. Yeah. Because everything in heaven. See, I do not see like free things. One time I went to Malcolm. I saw a very nice television. Then I checked the price. Then I left the TV. Everything in heaven has a price tag. You are married. If it's from heaven, it has a price tag. Yeah, and you must be willing to pay. Is that what Adonation doesn't want to hear? But once you come into the kingdom of things, it's a religious lie. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. Some of us even think that when prophets lay their hands on you, and pray for you, the miracle will come. How many hands has been laid on you? How many prophecies have you received? And what has changed in your life? It's a fight. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. Paul said to Timothy that the prophecies you have received, that by them you will wait a good war. It means that prophecy is a prayer topic. Oh, you can write it down this morning. Prophecy doesn't come to comfort you. When prophecy comes, it comes to give you a prayer topic to fight. Comes to give you a prayer topic to fight. Are we together this morning here? Oh, are we together this morning here? I was praying. The Lord said that prophecy gives you direction into your destiny, but prayer gives you acceleration into your destiny. Yeah, yes, you can write it down. Prophecy, it gives you direction into your destiny, but prayer gives you acceleration into that destiny. Prayer gives you movement. Oh my God. So by them you will fight a good war. And you see, the Apostle Paul moved the thing from a battle to a war. Ay, 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 ay. He moved it from a battle to a war. 
may you become a warrior this morning. Oh, I said, may you become a warrior this morning. I said, may you become a warrior this morning. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. He said that the problem is by, by them you will wage a good war. Now, a war is different from a battle because a battle is bigger. Sorry, a war is bigger than a battle. Praise the Lord. Many battles come together to make a war. A battle is usually a fight between less number of people. Nothing so really strange, no. But wars are fight between nations and kingdoms. I went together here. And it means that you can lose a battle, but you can win a war. For example, for example, Job lost everything he had. The enemy brought a battle against his substance. But at the end of the day, Job 42.10, Job had a double of all that he lost. So Job lost the battle of his substance, but at the end of the day, Job won the war. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. It means that you can lose a battle, but you must not lose the war. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. When you are a student and you fail your exam, it's a battle you have failed. And you must write again till you pass. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. When that young boy breaks your heart, it's a battle. But you must be prepared to win the war of your marriage. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody at this money here. So, Paul said that Timothy, you must be a warrior. Because the Timothy will be a man of a be a of a son. And that's our generation. No, I love prophecy. It comforts, it can calm your heart, it can dry your tears away. But, people of God, it comes to give you direction. What gives you acceleration into that destiny is how you carry that prayer and you start to make war about it. Oh, I went together this morning here. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 13, one of the scriptures that we quote, can we put it on the screen? Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. Oh my God. And Moses said unto the people, fear not and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. May you see the salvation of the Lord. I said, may you see the salvation of the Lord. I said, may the Lord come through for you this morning. As you shout, amen, may the Lord give you divine intervention. I said, may the Lord give you a surprise miracle. Or can you shout a louder amen here? He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Now, wait. He says, stand still. Now, wait. Who said? And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand still. So Moses said, Fear not. Stand still. You see, if you're reading the Bible, you must read it intelligently. In the Bible, human beings spoke out of their own emotions. In the Bible, human beings spoke out of your own depression. In the Bible, demons spoke through people. So not everything in the Bible is the word of God. Oh, I'm not taking somebody this demon here. Now, so the Bible said that when the Israelites got to the Red Sea, Moses said, and said to the people, fear not and stand. So Moses said, don't fear. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them no more. Verse 14. Now Moses says that the Lord shall fight for you. So you see, these are the things we say. Who said it? Was it God? Oh, was it God? So Moses says that the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Let's now hear what the Lord said. Go to verse 15. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore are you crying? So it means that the guy has given the prophecy by his crying. Oh, I'm not taking here. Sometimes a man of God can tell you something by himself. He's doubting. So after Moses was encouraging them, he went to the room and started crying. And the Lord said, Wherefore are you crying unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they should go forward. Oh, I'm going to tell you somebody here. So Moses says, Stand still. The Lord says, Go. Oh, somebody is not catching the revelation here. I said, You're not catching that. If you caught the revelation, you will clap your hands. I said, God. Now, God is a fighter. No, at this time, the Red Sea was not divided. It was not divided though. God said, go for, face the thing. If you drown, drown. 
but never think of turning back. May you stand up to fight for your marriage. I say, may you fight for your children. May you fight for your business. Oh, I'm not taking it somebody here. Rise up and say, Lord, I am moving forward in your power, in your power, in your might. Clap your hands, give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Fight, but the Lord said, Me, no, you stretch out your road. Abakata, go to the verse 16. Aluria Tashanda, the verse 17. Let me show you something. And behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians, and they shall follow you, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh. May the Lord be honored on your enemies. I say, May the Lord be honored on your enemy. Any Pharaoh after your life, any witch, any wizard. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. May the Lord be honored. May the Lord be honored. May the Lord be honored. Bakaba Shanda said that, and I will, I will get. Oh, listen, God loves fighting Christians. It brings honor to Him. He says that, and 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 I will gain honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his host and upon his chariots and upon his chariots men. Oh my God! Go to the verse eighteen. Say that. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten honor upon Pharaoh. May your enemies know God. I say, may the witches in your family know God. When they come for your baby dedication, when they come to your marriage ceremony, when they come to your graduation, they will know we serve a living God. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise this morning? Go to the verse 19. Let me show you what happened. Go to the verse 20. Kabakata. Baru atasada. Go to the verse 21. I want to show you a scripture. But yeah. Bible said, and Moses. So Nipanos and they should stand still. Now God is God has commanded him that even you, you are inclusive. Said, and Moses stretched out his hand over the Red Sea, and the Lord caused. So when you stretch out your hand, the Lord will start moving. As you stretch your hands this morning, may the Lord cause your Red Sea to go back in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. And Moses stretched out his hand. Whose hand? Moses. Psalm 114 verse 1 project. Bible said, I am the Lord thy strength. Who teaches your fingers how to fight and your hands how to war? Bakalu Ariata. Maloko Shadaba. Psalm 144 verse 1. Baroko Say, blessed be the Lord my strength, who teaches my hands. Oh my God. Say, Father, teach my hands. How to war? How to war? Oh, say, Father, teach my hands how to war and my fingers how to fight. Bakoto. So if you're a, a woman, don't be only skillful in preparing in Katenkwan. Be a skillful prayer woman. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. Some women want son or oh, oh, papa. Bless the Lord, but we need say, Lord, teach my hands how to war. Oh my God, and my fingers how to fight. But look at your say in the name of Jesus. Say by this hands, I will take down my Goliath. I will slay my Goliath in the name of Jesus. Say by this hands, I will break every altar. When I clap my eyes, when I clap my eyes. All this will be broken. Lagada braka teke. Yabalaga duna makataya. Please be seated. Fire. Oh, are you are you fired up this morning? Are you fired up this morning? Yeah. Okay. Teaches my hands how to walk. As a believer. No, don't sit down like that. No, 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 no. It's a fight of faith. You want to start a business? You want to break through in ministry? You want to be married there is a fight I tell you and sometimes i realize that when the thing delays immediately it is big i told mr eric that when when it is late it means god has ordained it to become the latest oh i'm not taking somebody here don't sit back and let your faith withdraw from god he said to jeremiah that i know the thoughts i think towards you to 
give you an expected ending. Oh my God. May you become a fighter after this morning. I say, may you become a fighter after this morning. Please be seated. Balaka Shada. Oh, I will tell you something this morning here. It just my hands how to walk and my fingers how to fight. The kingdom man, is a fighting kingdom. Odell, it's a fighting kingdom. When God said to me, change your prayer, don't arrest, kill. I said, wow, that's a way. A man of God got born again. And then when he got born again, the enemies of his family were after him to kill him. Everywhere they were shooting arrows at him to kill him. When he goes to this church, the pastor will say, you know, pray for your enemies. Jesus said, pray for those who love you. And as you pray for them, it will be like heaping charcoal of fire upon their head. Ah, when he leaves the place, the arrows are coming at him. So he, he got fed up. And one day he saw another man of God having a crusade. At Bishop Benson in the house and he was passing by. And the man made a comment that in this life, if you are not ready to die, get ready to kill. And he said, I like, I like this message. I want to be a member of the... Look at somebody and say, it is time to slaughter some things. Or oh, the person, you are not a civilian. In the kingdom, you are a soldier. Or oh, for the person, it is time. Rise up in prayer and slaughter some demons. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? I was, I was, I, I will show you a scripture and then we'll fire prayer. In Mark chapter 11, verse 2, Jesus was talking about the donkey who was tied. Sometimes uh, we read the scripture blindly. Jesus said to his disciples, that donkey had four altars fighting his destiny. Last time I was coming from mommy's house and the Lord said, who told you it's only one altar that is fighting you? And I said, God, wait a minute. He said that you have overcome the altar. That doesn't make people rise to become a pastor. But you have to break the altar of poverty. I said, wow. And the Lord said that so there were kinds and categories of altars. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. An altar, a, a house can have as many as 16 altars. So you can break the altar of going to school or break it. But the altar of God is still there. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. So you can break the altar of marriage. But the altar of children is still there. Oh, I want to learn something here. And God said to me, you must bring that altar. I said, thank you, Holy Ghost. Because I was, I was working, thinking it's okay. And the Lord said, no, you must. Because I, I don't know who likes money on this earth than me here. Because my plans and the things I want to do. Oh, oh the Lord is laughing. My plan, if I hear money, my, my spirit is excited. And the Lord said, you must break. May you break every altar in your family. Oh, I said, may you break every altar in your family. Jesus said, go to the village, number one. There was an altar in there. You know, every village has an altar that fights the people from there. Altar. Go to the village. When you go to the village, you will get to a junction. See, if you are spiritual, every junction is an altar. I don't sleep at night. Sometimes I can be walking around 12 a.m., 1 a.m. I can get to a junction. Then they put, sorry to say, a lady's andy, red, with money, calabash. On a, every junction is an altar. If you're a believer and you get to a junction and you see money there, don't say thank you, Lord, for divine supply. It's, 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 it's an enchantment. Oh, I want to know something here. Every junction is an altar. So God is saying that there's a, a junction, there's an altar at that junction, second altar. Because that you, you see the donkey tied to a tree. If some of us say, we are giving up. You know why? Because we are broken the altar of schooling. Go into the Union University. And you are giving up on God, thinking it is all. But the altar of working is still there. Oh, I will learn something this morning here. Oh, I will learn something this morning here. And that is why you can't give up. I came to charge your faith this morning. The fact that you are not dead yet, it means you are an, an overcomer. Bible said that little children, I speak to you that ye have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody this day. Yeah. Some of us have been to the uni. You send application here, they'll call you, they don't call you. You go for the interview, you, you hear from us. They don't, they don't care. Expecting that no, there's an altar fighting. Oh, I will learn something here. Those of us believing God to get married, you get married. There's another altar that fights children. 
you must be prepared to deal. Oh, I will learn something else money here. Yeah. So don't close your hands thinking that will go. And God has turned his back on you. God will no, 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 no. You must rise up and fight. Tell somebody you must rise up and fight. Every altar that is not broken in your family. Tell the person, every altar that is not yet broken. As you live here this morning, declare war against that altar. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody this morning here. Oh, I want to know something here. So the donkey, and Jesus said that when you lose the donkey, a man will come and tell you why you, the man was another altar. So one donkey, eh? so you are a, a human being, one donkey, there were four altars that were standing against him. Can I shock you? In Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, the donkey was prophesied by Zachariah. So the reason why the enemy was attacking that donkey, go to Zachariah 9, 9 for me, is because there was a prophecy concerning that donkey. Zachariah 9, 9. Say that, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, and shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly, and riding on an ass upon a colt, the fall of an ass. So there was a prophecy. Oh, I want to say something here. That is why when a prophecy comes, it is time for warfare. One time I was I was I was watching a prophet. He called a woman to prophesy to the woman. And he called the woman and said that I won't tell you the prophecy. So why prophet? He said that because if I give to you, your warfare will increase. And as I see you now, your prayer level is low. So if this one comes, that is why sometimes a prophecy can come and your life can become worse. Oh, how many of us have heard that thing before? Oh, have you had that experience before? They can prophesy about a breakthrough in your business. And that is when the business is going down. Immediately the prophecy came, the enemy started fighting. But you, ta- but you started sitting down thinking it will come to pass. No. Oh, I want to know something here. You can receive prophecy about marriage. That is the week your boyfriend will even leave you. Yeah. Because the enemy, oh, I want to know something here. Prophecy gives you direction, but prayer gives you acceleration. So there was a prophecy about that call, that donkey. And the enemy started to raise up four altars. Who we'll pray this morning. Hallelujah. Any number, some of you, Cape Coast, for example, there are 70. 70, solid. Yeah. 70. 77. Eh? Oh, 77. Yeah, I was, I was sitting in a car going to Accra on Monday. I started, I became sad on the journey. The Lord said, why can't my church overcome? I said, why? He said, in the days of Daniel, he said nobody should pray for 30 days. Daniel opened his window. To fight, faith is a fight. Today, we must fight the ten. Oh my God. I love, I love this founder of CPIC, Osu Assembly. They, they declared it in, in Homo went and bought arms, licensed them in his church. On Sunday, started, they came, started shooting, they ran away. It's a, I said, what, it's a fight. But we, last week Sunday, when they came, I was so heartbroken. But you can tell us to hold on to the worship of God. In Daniel's day, they said, don't pray for 30 days. As a matter of fact, Daniel was praying in his closet. When that decree was made, he opened his window. Open facing where the temple is, facing where they started praying. They called Daniel. Oh my god, Bible, our Lord, Bible said that there was a certain Daniel, it means there were some type of Daniel, but that Daniel was certain. Oh, I will learn something here. The church has lost that fighting spirit. I was so asking God, so no church can make noise. If you want us to shout, we can't shout. Because of a festival, when did the church become a subject to traditional authority? When did the church become a subject? Oh, I want to learn something here. Listen, we are the church must rise up and fight. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. When Daniel stood up to fight, the king decreed that everybody in that area must worship his God. So, how can we get them to come to church? It's when we rise up to fight for the Lord. Oh, you're not clapping your hands this morning, the way you're looking at me. Are we, are we together? Yeah. I was in the car. The Lord said, why can't my church fight? No church is drumming. 
no church is making noise. They want their own altar to become stronger because a festival is coming and the Lord sits in heaven and wants us to make Since when did the church become a subject? No. So, um, when they brought the letter, I was really feeling some way. But listen, very soon we are going to challenge them. Oh, you are, as a person, we are going to tell. Oh, you are, as a person, we are going to tell. You see, if, if, if you are not a fighter, you can't say amen here. As a person, we are going to challenge them. Hey, you are, as a, very soon, we say, if you believe with me, give me a wave here. So, it means that all of us are not happy about the thing, and we are quiet. I thought all of us are happy. It means all of us are not. I said, very soon, oh my God, when the Lord has brought us to that place, when he has made we a challenge, Oh, I'm not talking to somebody this morning here. The church must fight. The early church, they caught, they caught them, they beat them, put them in prison. Uh, what boy I don't think next week anybody will come to church. No, the early church, no, 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 they understood that the thing called faith is a fight. The iron iron there is about word dressing, spending hours in the saloon, then they'll do some hair and cover your one eye. Wait, only Friday, as you are coming, you can't see the road well. That is not what the kingdom is about. Oh, I'm not taking somebody here. It's about fighting. Say fighting. Say fighting. I was praying last night. I was tired. The Lord said, Can I tell someone? He said that if you fear troubles, I can't use you in this end time. Any said that if you fear troubles, to tell my people they shouldn't run away from troubles. For it is in the midst of the troubles that I am honored as Jehovah. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. I heard that word clear. So listen, every battle you have, don't run away. He said, it is in the midst of the trouble that I am honored as Jehovah. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't run from that trouble. Don't run from that trouble. Some of you ladies, when your heart is broken, Instead of you to declare some prayer and fasting, you are quick to get another boyfriend. The wound is not here. Eh? I was talking to one lady. He said, no, the way I'm beautiful, I can't be nursing. It will be some way to see that I don't have a boyfriend. So they broke his heart on Monday. Wednesday, she's accepting. And he said, Our, even, even when I was moving with him, there were, no, there were, what word should I use? There were, applications. Oh boy, thank you. There were applications. So when they broke her heart on Monday, Wednesday, she was receiving somebody for interview. You are not smart. Yeah. Oh, say fight. Look at a neighbor and say you have to fight. You have to fight. The prophecy concerning your life. The destiny that you are carrying. You must rise up to be a fighter. Oh, I'm not talking to somebody this morning. Can you give the Lord a shout of praise? Bakato Sakata Kata. Yeah, fight. Oh, I want to something here. And the guy breaks your heart. Thinking that he will do you good. He also comes again. Most of the time, when there's a broken heart, what pays people is their investment into the relationship. So what investment? You see, if you don't invest and the thing collapse, on Saturday you'll be brave. <laughs> but if any investment, you are time. Pastor, I don't understand my time been with him for this number of years. And sometimes it's not just the time of but the ears, the locals may eat. But the caterpillars, they eat another thing. So apart from her time, other things. The past time, corner my yam and soup. Naza my a fridge in And not just the caterpillar, the canker worm. See, they're not talking about the acrobatic display on the bed. I don't know about anyone. The acrobatic displays on the bed. And this guy breaks your heart Monday. Wednesday, you are certain. The wound has not even healed. Look at somebody and say, You have to fight. You have to fight. You have to fight. And can I tell you one thing about God? When the Wednesday guy who comes for interview, when he's accepted, when he's breaking your heart, his pain is double. Yeah. Because he comes to mess up the already wounded person. Oh, I will learn something this morning here. So declare, oh, I must say something here. Things don't fall into your hands like that. No. Everything from heaven has a price tag. It, there's a tag on the thing. Those of us believe in the Lord for oil, for ministry, there's a tag. I don't have time. We have to close. I'll show you where we have to fight the flesh. 
We have to fight the world. We have to fight the wicked one. Oh, I will learn something this morning here. But I see an oil resting upon each and every one of us here. I say, I see the Lord anointing every one of us this morning here. After here, your eyes will be red in the spirit. After here, your hands will become so charged. You will fight for your business. I see you opening another business. I see you getting married before the end of the year. I see you graduating from your school. You will bring my children here. And we shall do a baby dedication. Oh, I'm attacking somebody this morning. Can you rise up on your feet this morning? Give the Lord a clap offering and a shout. Thank you for listening. You can locate Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry at the Ogwa Teachers Hall, Bakano, Cape Coast.